Good morning, everyone. It is a little bit before seven o'clock. We are heading for our tour soon. We have to be there at quarter to eight. And we are doing the Marceline to Magic Kingdom tour. It is a little bit breezy this morning, but clearly very dark. We had the time change yesterday, so it's good that it's a little bit brighter later, but <laughs> this is very dark, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, this morning we're off to our tour. It's still a little bit dark out. There is no monorail this morning, so we're gonna go for the buses. Good morning, Magic Kingdom. Thank you. So, this morning we're going on a tour and we're doing the Marceline to Magic Kingdom tour. We're heading to the town square right now so we can meet up with our group. So, this morning we got this little name tag and we get this pouch for our listening device. We're just waiting in the town square for our tour to begin. So they pack the family up and they move them to the small town of Marceline, Missouri. Walt would later go on to say that more things of importance happened to him while he lived in Marceline than ever happened again in his future. It was where the building blocks for the rest of his life were really put into place. USA. Now, of course, we are set at the turn of the century here on Main Street. So, at the turn of the century, we are experiencing a lot of new technologies out there. What I mean by that is if you look up right here, we have gas lamps. But the further you travel down Main Street, USA, our gas lamps turn to electric lamps. Because we're starting to explore that new technology. You may have seen it when you came in or as it went by just a few minutes ago. We had our horseless buggy going up and down Main Street. We had a few of those. And a little bit later today, when he wakes up from our nap, from his nap, we'll have our horse and buggy going up and down Main Street as well. At the end of the street to greet us. Standing with arguably his most famous character, Mickey Mouse. Now, Walt animators believed that Mickey was like the personal manifestation of Walt Disney. Direct reflection of the game. His sense of pride and optimism, always looking out for his friends, always being the hero, was something that you could see in Walt himself. <laughs> oh! Change the year my birthday ticket from 1901 to 1900. Can I complain to the American Red Cross? And of course she says, No! That's a terrible idea. Why would I let you do that? But again, if you're a good teenager, you know that you can usually wear one down after one. <laughs> So they wanted to give us an interactive cue or something to do while you wait because for kids nowadays, a 30 minute wait feels like three hours, right? For some of our parents, a 30 minute wait with their kids lower feels like three hours, right? So we added in things to do. And you have probably walked by these bus a hundred times. You've maybe stopped and taken a photo with them and not even realized that what we have here, folks, is a murder mystery game. It starts with Uncle Jacob. Uncle Jacob has a lot of money, and everybody wants a cut of that action. So if you read, you'll actually find out what happens. It said, Uncle Jacob, greed was the poison that he swallowed. He went first, the others followed. His killer's face, he surely knew, but tried to discover who killed who. So we know that our sleeping beauty, who never awoke the night her dreams, went up and slept. Well, it kind of ends with cousin Vaughn, right? Well, I'll tell you. During this time period, we didn't have hair ties or bobby pins to hold our hair in place. So we would use whatever we had laying around the house to hold your hair up. So I invite you to come around here and take a look and see what's holding it up. Take a look. <coughs> the little detail. Come oh, on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Anytime I'm talking about something, hurry her up, dude. 
for those of you that matches. Know, matches. So she's got kerosene in her hair. She's got matchsticks holding it up right there. The idea is that she tossed and she turned that her dreams quite literally went up in smoke. Right? That's what Cousin Mod wants you to believe. We've all been on the Haunted Mansion, yes? Yeah? At the end, there's the hitchhiking ghosts. Right before they get into the dune buggies with you, you see right in front of you, there is a photo in the left-hand corner with Cousin Maud in a match and a sinister grin. She faked her own death so she could not only get away with Uncle Jacob's money, but everybody else's as well. One guy that we wanted to do it, and it was X. So X writes a script, realizes very early on the process that it's going to need a song. So he also, instead of going through the whole back and forth with the world of, I don't write a song, I don't know how to write music, he, um, he goes ahead and he writes Grim Grinning Ghost, something that you can definitely hear playing behind me as well. Once again, one of the most recognizable songs in our works, written by a gentleman who claims to never be a songwriter. Kind of crazy, isn't it? was that after the artist or the animators would draw a sequence, they would go back in and they would color in all the details. That's right, they were professional colorers for a living. Are you having a good day? Yeah? Good. My day is always great. Think about it and I've seen you. Yeah. 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 here but it's a goofy a goof and a Mickey we're in tomorrow 